welcome. Thank you for joining today. My name is Jamie, and this is our EDI Reports webinar. In this webinar, we'll go over the ANSI X12 EDI reports and how they work in Premiere. I will also talk about tasks and widgets and how they're tied in to those EDI reports. The first thing I would like to show you is where you can find help and detailed information about this topic. On the top ribbon bar, you're going to see the help topics icon. Clicking this will open our online help, sy help system where you can search by keywords or by topic, including EDI reports. So in this webinar, the EDI reports that we discuss are the two types of reports that will help with claim follow-up. These reports, especially the 277, will help you catch claim rejections and help with claim follow-up. As you know, claim follow-up is very important to a provider's office. It can dramatically increase revenue by making sure that you're not leaving any money on the table. Utilizing Premier's features can help you with that. So when claims are sent electronically from your software to a clearinghouse, the clearinghouse generates EDI reports that can be sent back electronically in response to your claims, letting you know if they were accepted or rejected. In Premier, all of your EDI reports will be found in your View EDI Reports tab. To check for new reports, you would click on the Get Reports button along the right-hand side. If you are a non-FTP sender, you will click Add Reports. But anybody sending uh, via FTP to a clearinghouse will click on Get Reports to download any new reports. The new reports will download in a bold font and be at the top of your list. After you open a report, it will move to the bottom of the report list. There are archive and delete buttons located at the lower right hand corner to help with report organization. The reports grid is also sortable, filterable, and there is a search option in the upper right corner. To sort, you would just click on the column headers, and they will sort in the sending or descending manner. Um, if you will notice here in my Premiere, we have added a few more columns that are available in this screen or in this grid. Uh, if you access your column chooser, you can pull out the new columns, payer, payment amount, date, which is actually the check date. And trace number, which is the trace number, you can also pull out method as well. To filter in any of these rows, you would just type into the filter row located just under the column header. You can also click the mini filter icon in the upper left corner of the column. Now, Premiere will only analyze ANSI EDI files, although you can view other types of reports, such as text files, only the ANSI files will have the capabilities that I discussed today. There are two types of EDI reports that we're going to go deep into, the ANSI 999 and the ANSI 277, and those are your batch acknowledgments and your claim status reports, respectively. Let's start with our 999 report. Once you've uploaded a batch successfully to your clearinghouse, the first report that you receive is the acknowledgement file, known as a 999. That's the technical name. This is usually received within 24 hours of submitting a batch of claims and lets you know if your entire batch was accepted or rejected at the clearinghouse. Don't confuse the 999 batch status with claim status. Just because the batch was accepted does not mean that the claims were accepted. It just means that the batch is accepted, it's made it through the door, and they're going to look at your claims. So to open or run a report, you want to double click on it. And as I double click on the report, the program 
is parsing the data behind the scenes, but we do see some text here on the preview or on the open file. As you can see, there's no real exciting information. We do see our A for accepted. You also see your functional group control number, which in a sense is your batch number. And as I've said, this, this report did some work for us in the background. So when I close this, or I'll just go over back to my EDI reports tab, and I scroll down because now this report is at the bottom of my list, I do see the accepted note that is populated in our note grid. And this particular batch, as you can see, was definitely accepted. We have another 999 in here, for example. This particular batch was rejected. And you get to see the rejected reason as you open the report. We just have a sample one here that doesn't have a, a lot of information. Typically, you would receive some more information about where in the file the error is. Still, we see that note now down here, letting us know that this was our rejected batch. Now, Premiere also makes use of a batch status widget to help you track your batches. This is visible on the Home tab, and will show the accepted or rejected notes for your different batches. And I like to kind of use this as kind of a, a pulse on the practice, letting you know that batches are going out and being accepted. Now, after your batch has been accepted for processing, the next report that a clearinghouse will generate is the 277 or claim acknowledgement report. Different clearinghouses, <clears throat> excuse me, use different file names but the info is the same. Some clearinghouses like Trizetto will generate multiple types of 277 reports, one that's human readable and the other for the computer to read, the ANSI version. In this webinar, we concentrate on the computer readable 277 ANSI report. Um, as a quick note for our Trizetto users, Trizetto sends you three versions of the 277 report the actual 277 claim acknowledgement. They also send a .csr and a .dat claim status report and claim status data. Uh, the DAT is a human readable file, and the CSR is an incomplete version of the 277. Specifically, it contains truncated text, meaning your rejection reasons are cut off, and that's not good if you can't read your rejection reason. Uh, so we do try to clarify, uh, if you are using Trizetto as a clearinghouse, uh, you don't need to be opening the CSR, the DAT files, but it's very, very important that you're opening your claim acknowledgement 277 files. Now, when we double click on the file, the program is gonna give a short summary of the number of claims that were updated within this file. And what it's doing is it's uploading a claim note stating whether the claim was accepted or rejected. And our thinking is that if the claim was uh, accepted for adjudication, we really don't need to look at the claim. Um, so we just add the accepted note behind the scenes. But after we click OK here, if any of these two claims were rejected, we're going to see a new tab appear with a list of the rejected claims and their reasons and we did have one reject. The rejection tab will display the patient name, the insurance, and date information, such as the first date of service and when it was billed out. And on the far left-hand side, we're gonna see a plus sign indicating that we can expand the selection to see more detail, and this is where we're going to see our actual rejection note. We can see here that Medicare is telling us a member wasn't found, we had an invalid ID or something along those lines. From here, we can double-click to open the claim, 
and fix the, in the information and resubmit it. So I'm just going to double click anywhere on this rejected note. And to point out, we do see our rejected note down here at the bottom in our claim notes. And again, this told us that we have a member ID not found. Um, I'm going to say that I looked at their insurance ID card and saw that I did have a typo. So I'm going to go ahead and re-change this up. I'm just going to put a ID in there, save that. We would change our status back to ready to submit and save and close the claim. Now, if you have a long list of rejections, you may not have time to fix all of the claims uh, right today. And this is where that task list will come in handy. You can check mark the claim along the right, or sorry, the left hand side. And going back over to the right, we have a create task button. Clicking that, a new task dialog box opens pre-populates with our subject of rejected claim. It's capturing the patient name and the claim date behind the scenes. We can add any other details if we want to assign it to a staff member, associate the start date or a due date if it is time sensitive. Uh, you can also set a reminder if you want to make sure uh, that you're reminded about this. Although I do uh, not recommend setting reminders for all of your tasks. You can put in your own note, or you can tell the program to just use the rejection note as your um, note area here. And once we click OK, our task is now visible in our quick access task. And we can also find it in our fine task grid as well. Um, I do like the Find Task Grid for working the tasks. Um, it does show you an entire view. Um, and I do think it's a little bit easier to search and sort from here. And there are also right-click options available so that you can mark the task as complete. Or if they were made in error, you can even delete them or remove any reminders that you don't need anymore. As you can see here, having users set up in your program will be extremely important to fully utilize the task system if you have staff members um, that you can assign them to. And users can be set up on your Tools tab in Manage Security Settings. Just to stay on the topic of tasks real quick, if you have any other items in your program that you find uh, are, are items that need to be accomplished, tasks that need to be done. You can pretty much create tasks from anywhere in the program, uh, or many different areas, by right-clicking. So I'm going to right-click on a patient on the left-hand side here, and you can add tasks. You can also right-click from claims. And so it's very easy to build a comprehensive uh, follow-up list for anything that you may have to do within the program. Now back to our EDI Reports tab. These two, our 277 reports also work in conjunction with our rejected claim widget. We've already discussed one of the widgets already, the batch status widget, which will display the accepted or rejected note. But going back to our home tab, we can also see that we have this rejected claim. Um, I'm going to refresh my screen here. And I must have not have caught this, or we have a quicker note on here. Sometimes our rejected uh, task widget here, uh, it's very date sensitive. Um, and since I have a dummy database here, it 
is um, doesn't always show the tasks the way I want them to. So I apologize for that. But uh, when you're working in a in a normal uh, environment with normal 277 reports, uh, typically the way this works is as you get a rejected task, you're also going to see it on here. And as you work the task and resubmit the claim, it will drop off of this list. Now, I don't recommend using this uh, as your end-all be-all for finding your rejected class, your rejected tasks or claims. Um, I, it is just kind of a, a, a backup for any rejected claims. I do highly recommend making use of the task system to make sure that you are not letting any slip through the cracks. But this is a nice little backup. Um, just as a quick note, there is also the denied claims widget. This is pulling information from your 835 files, uh, the, your payment files. Um, I do have a whole separate webinar on the auto posting, which you can um, watch a recording on our YouTube channel or at easyclaim.com, or you can sign up for one of the upcoming live webinars. I'd um, like to go back and just open up a few more of our claim status reports here. Um, we do have a couple other sample ones here. Uh, so sometimes you might get this information that says claims not found. Um, and that's just us letting you know that the claims coming back from the clearinghouse in your report, we couldn't find an exact match to the patient or the claim in your program. Uh, sometimes that can be because of a name mismatch. Sometimes that could be uh, if you're new to the program, the claims weren't sent from Premier. They were in uh, an older program. Um, but we do give you an opportunity to find them, to locate or to force a connection. Um, so in our instance here, we had a claim for patient Brooks, uh, says that it couldn't find a perfect match from. So when I click find, It's going to pre-populate our find claim pop-up with the patient name and date. I still have nothing found here, so my usual course of action would be to start to remove some of this pre-populated area in the filters and see if we can find a matching claim. Um, like I said, we kind of have a lot of dummy data in here, so I do not have a matching claim um, on here. So that might be an example where, hey, this claim wasn't sent from my program. Um, and I don't have anything to match it up. And if that's the case, you're just going to close. And the only thing that's happening um, is the, the status update isn't being imported. Um, on this one, we can see that it was rejected, though. So you may want to uh, pull out that note field a little bigger just to see what that rejection reason is. But for the most part, you're going to be able to match it up to a claim. And the normal course will still uh, occur. You can see the rejection again here as it comes out on its rejections tab. And let's do a couple more reports here. And again, we still got our claims not found because I'm using dummy data. Um, but it just shows that you can try and find the patient. Uh, this one might be a, smelly, a spelling error or a typing error. And again, because we use a rotating dates here, I'm just getting it because um, our dates have updated. There's no matching claim in my system yet for that. But that would be the process process if you are getting that claims not found you just match them up. Typically, if it's because of a name match, an example I see a lot is um, you have the name maybe Sarah in your program, spelled S-A-R-A, -A, and they have the clearinghouse in the insurance company sending it back S-A-R-A-H. Uh, you may want to update your information. Even if the insurance company has it spelled wrong, update your data to what they have. It'll make your life a little bit easier. Uh, this does our conclude our webinar. I would like to thank you for joining today. Please take a look at our webinar calendar at easyclaim.com and also our YouTube channel where we have them all posted so that you can watch them at your own time. Um, thank you, and we'll see you soon.